Well, I like the saying of some old timers that the that these spectacular mountains brought them to Jackson Hole, but it's the rivers that uh, sustained them and kept them here. Oh, the rivers, the rivers and streams of this valley, and of course, the real endemic old timer of that water system is the Snake River cutthroat, our indigenous trout. Anything we can do to sustain that population, to protect and restore spawning streams and, and uh, historic corridors for this great fish is important to all of us. Perhaps it's a genetic disorder, but the Turners have been addicted to fly fishing for cutthroat for five generations. And we've enjoyed this wonderful landscape and the rivers and streams, but Fred Creek has really been a a special little fishing stream. And I think this project is going to enhance that legacy considerably. This general part of the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem, Spread Creek included, is really known for being these headwater reaches of very important Western American rivers, the Snake River in this case. And the Bridger Teton National Forest is known as a headwaters national forest for some of America's great rivers, the Yellowstone, the Snake, and the Green River. Trout Unlimited's work in Spread Creek really began over a decade ago when there used to be a concrete dam that spanned the entire channel and completely blocked all migration of Snake River cutthroat trout from the Snake River up into the upper reaches of Spread Creek. In 2010, that concrete dam was removed by Trout Unlimited, Grand Teton National Park, a number of other partners and in doing so, that opened up a major migration corridor for this whole system. There's so many old reds here, right here. Tons of fish spawn here. We know tributaries are gonna be the most resilient under climate change, during the summer especially. These are where the cold water is going to be, and providing fish access to that allows fish to track temperatures that they can persist in. We're basically seeing by removing that dam, adults coming up, but also juveniles having unimpeded access down. So that means we know that those juveniles that go to the snake have an opportunity to get big and still come back here and, and uh, spawn in these tributary streams. It's not just like giving fish the opportunity to come up and spawn, it's, it's it's accessing different habitats. It's allowing different life histories. And by having different life histories of like resident fish that just hang out in resident streams or migratory fish that go to the snake or everything in between, that diversity is what we're trying to conserve. That, that is what we're all after that. That's what we have in the snake and that's what makes it so special, right? We have really healthy populations of cutthroat here. It's our native fish, and this is probably the most intact population of cutthroat in the world, arguably. Spread Creek is a very dynamic system. Geomorphically, it's extremely unstable at this particular location. It likes to move around like a river does. And the initial designs that were put in, three rock weirs with a foot drop each, have mobilized and caused some incision. So over the years we've tried to rebuild those, but a more robust solution was necessary to ensure the long-term sustainability of this particular project. Whenever you draw a lot of water out of a stream, fish can and will go into that particular diversion. It's a problem all across the West. we found out that the irrigators were having a really difficult time getting their water 
with the diversion, um, particularly after some, a couple of really high flow years damaged the diversion. We also found that the land was literally washing away and we're on public land right here. We're on Bridger Teton National Forest land. And so when we started to think about the project as a whole, we realized we couldn't just invest in the fish screen. We also needed to double down and triple down and make sure that the project that we have planned is really a win-win-win for the fish, for the irrigators, and for the public. You couldn't sustain these operations without this irrigation water. So it's a wonderful, creative, bold effort by TU with a lot of federal and state partners and donors and, and volunteers, not only to sustain the irrigation water, which is essential to keeping these historic ranch operations going, but of course uh, we've been able to restore the Snake River Cutthroat Passage uh, up into the Spread Creek drainage and another 40, 50 miles of, of uh, quality headwater habitat. Every year since 2014, TU and Game and Fish and the Park Service, we've been going into the ditches at the end of the irrigation season and electrofishing and essentially rescuing the fish out of the irrigation ditches and bringing them back by hand um, to Spread Creek and releasing them. And that's only the tip of the iceberg, that's only a fraction of the fish that would be lost into this ditch during the whole course of the irrigation season. So what we'll do is just walk upstream and electrofish, and then as we catch fish, we put them into buckets. And then we do have a big old, you know, big live well or tank sort of in the back of a truck, and then we can move the fish to that. Um, and then from there, we can take lengths and weights and let them go back in Spread Creek. When we initially approached the second phase of the Spread Creek project, we wanted it to be focused on a fish screen, essentially a structure that would let water flow to the irrigators while also passing fish out of the ditch and back into Spread Creek. The National Park Service mission is to protect and conserve for future and current generations. And to do that, we really rely on robust partnerships uh, at all different levels to actually implement that work. And this is a great example of where we've partnered with other land management agencies, nonprofits, to actually remove a complete fish barrier and implement a design and diversion structure that actually allows fish passage. And so over the past 10 years, we've been continuing to work with those partners to a great degree, finding funding, coming up with collaborative, creative solutions. We've got to do the best we can to work on projects that have a high probability of success. And one of the biggest aspects of that success is when we've got a really good partnership and we've got um, agencies and nonprofits like Trout Unlimited that are going to put the time and resources into a project like this for the long term. I think that part of the story of Spread Creek is a story of persistence. It's a story of resiliency, um, not just for the fish in the stream and our beautiful native cutthroat trout, but also the partnerships and the relationships we've built. I don't think that we would be doing the fish screen and funding all of the in-stream work that we need to do if we didn't have the strength of those partnerships and over time to really build a solution here that works for everyone. This could be the last stronghold for cutthroat um, for a lot of places, in a lot of places. And so the more we can do to protect this population, the better. It's gonna be really rewarding to come back to this spot in the future and know that we really invested and stood by our partners and the irrigators and the fish. And when the going got tough, came up with good solutions to really continue the investment in Spread Creek into the future.